Okay, we are here. We made it. Yes, the podcast has landed. Long, long due. <laughs> long overdue. Yeah, <laughs> I say we get straight into it, man. Let's not keep the people yeah. waiting. Cool. So, last night's card. Let's talk about that first. All right, cool. Where do you want to start? We'll, we'll start with the early fights. Well, to be honest, I'll be honest. I didn't watch the whole card. I only okay. managed to watch um, Paddy's fight. Yeah, Bill's fight. I need to go back and watch the rest. Okay. But, Paddy, what are your thoughts? I thought he looked. It was a bit weird because he looked good, <laughs> but it was in stages. Like he looked good, but his fighting style is very different and awkward. Like yeah. the whole keeping his hands down and like just walking through shots, trying to evade them, maybe taking some shots to land some shots. Like mm. that's what I thought was a bit odd. And then when he got like hit hard, but like, you could see like he felt it. He definitely felt it. Mm. Mm. But he kept moving forward and got the finish. So it, do- it doesn't matter because he faced the adversity. And, uh, play to him, isn't it? Work. But yeah. yeah, what was your thoughts? Oh, mate, similar to you. Like, I think I've not really seen him fight before. So this was my first time like watching him fight and, and yeah. the hype that he's had behind him. Yeah. I had very high expectations. I was thinking, right, yeah. I can't wait to see this guy. Yeah, yeah, same. He's young in the game. Do you know what I mean? He's young. It's his first fight in the UFC. I don't want to be too hard on him. Yeah, yeah. He got the win at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, I think you and I both know, like, it, <laughs> but you can see so many holes. Yeah, yeah, you can see so many holes. You know, like, that top five, that lightweight division is yeah. Yeah. stacked. Yeah. And that top five, if he goes in against any of those looking like that, he's yeah. going to sleep. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think... But it could be one of them things. Like, you know, like, it could be one of them things where he has this awkward style, keeps his hands down, keeps his hands out because he thinks he can't get knocked out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. maybe he does have a, like, good chin because, I mean, I guess he took the shot on Rose. Took some hard like, shots. Like, some yeah, of the shots yeah. were, like, loud. And I was like, yeah. wow, how is this guy still standing? Yeah, it's true. Jeez. He, he's definitely, uh, he's an exciting fighter. I think he brings yeah. a lot of... He brings a lot of excitement to the UFC. I think the UFC is in need of that at the moment. Yeah. Um, especially from the UK scene as well. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Got, we, we've got Leon out there doing his thing. We've got Darren. Yeah. Um, but in terms of UFC, we don't really have much else. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, Paddy, P- Paddy's a breath of fresh air for the UK scene. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah 100%. I think. A little bit different as well. Very different. Did you see his post fight yeah. interview? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that guy. You can see that he's got like a, a star like quality about him. Mm. And his star will definitely grow. I think his stock definitely grew from the adversity that he faced in the fight. But yeah. the fact that he got hit hard, like he was a bit all over the place with his low hands, he was taking shots and stuff like that. But mm. as the round went on, we still took there's so much to break down, but it was only one round. Do you there know what is. I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Like one round. And he said he was going to get the first round finish, and he did. So He did. It's, we like, got, it's weird. You can't really, like, say anything because he got the finish and he KO'd the guy. It wasn't a decision yeah. either. Yeah. So you can't say too much, but he got he got cracked a few times and he looked yeah. a bit wild. Yeah. I don't yeah. know whether that's just because he knew he could win and he was, like, overconfident. As I said, I've yeah. not seen him fight before, so I don't know yeah. if this is his general fighting style. Well, I see, I didn't know much about him before. And obviously when I was watching the fight and I saw the commentary, they said he's a more of a grappler than he is a striker. Yeah, I heard that as well. Which is what I found quite interesting. Because mm. the way that he was fighting, you would have thought he was a striker having his hands down, like ready yeah. to like counter or to blitz. Because that's that's what I noticed as well. Just a bit, mm. si- a bit similar to what Tyron Woodley used to do. Mm. Is that blitz of just a couple of punches, like going full, bang, 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 mm. like one, twos and stuff. I mm. felt like I saw that a lot with him, like when he was trying to strike. He had some good kicks as well. And like he did yes. uh, I was very him. impressed. Like, yeah, yeah. He, he mixes it up a lot with his kicks. Like he was sweet, he was doing teeth kicks, leg kicks, all sorts from different angles, both legs as well, switch kicks, all sorts. I was very yeah. impressed with his with his yeah. variety of strikes. 
and I know it's like um, before the UFC and then when you're in the UFC, it's two completely different things. But if you look at his record that he has, mm. he was 16 and three before he went into the UFC. Mm. And for someone who's uh, Cage Warriors is quite a good promotion. Obviously, it's not one of the top promotions, but a lot of good talent has come from that. Um, obviously, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So getting 16 and three, if you're fighting in that organization, you've got to be doing something right now. He's uh, 17 and three. He's like, on the right path mm. and the record looks good like <laughs> do you know what i mean he looks good he does he does who do you want to see him fight next it's got to be someone in the top 15 in it he's not ready for that sort of top 10 yeah i'd probably like, give him probably some someone between 13 and 15 i wouldn't go any higher than that because yeah you don't want to rush him too much because you've seen so many fights that they've pushed exactly. too much i mean we'll get onto it with darren till exactly bit, uh, that's like, a later on, like another fighter from the uk that's been pushed too fast too soon mm -hmm. and you've seen what's happened to him like you don't want this to happen to someone else that has that same star quality from the uk and exactly the same thing happens mm -hmm. to him so they've got to be careful but i don't think they should do what they've done with sean o'malley just giving him unranked yeah. jump up Dragged it out, it? And, like i don't think they should do that with Maddie mm -hmm. at all but mm -hmm. i think like slow and steady and then i Baby think he step. will make yeah. some noise yeah 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 well with that being said and, and, and darren till's name being mentioned there i think we should sort of address the the big fight yeah. the main event yeah okay right what was your thoughts i'll let you i'll let you shoot i want him to win so bad do you know what i mean i love his he's got everything he's got the championship yeah. mentality yeah he's likable he's funny i think he can bring a lot of eyeballs to the sport he can be as big as Izzy if he can just get like the wins under his belt mm -hmm. but I think I think he really needs to sort of take a step back and reassess where where he needs to improve like for yeah. real I think yeah. his stand-up is clearly is, is polished yeah. every time do you know what I mean you saw against Whitaker he was yeah, that fight was what two two going into the last round. Yeah, and I think it was a takedown or something that managed to get yeah the the victory on on decision. Yeah, um, yeah. his stand up is polished. He can go toe to toe with the best of them. Um, I I think he really needs to work on his ground game. Yeah, one hundred percent. He looked like a fish out of water last night. Honestly, Brunson was just all over him. He looked yeah. like he'd never. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I don't want to sort of make it. I don't want to take anything away from Brunson because Brunson's amazing. His ground and pound yeah. Yeah. levels above everyone. I think he's probably yeah. the best wrestler in the division. Yeah. Um, but Till just looked, he just looked like he shouldn't have been in there with Brunson almost. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was all over him on the ground and there was no sort of, it wasn't close apart from when he was on, on the feet, of course. Yeah, exactly. I think it's one of them things where if, I don't want to make a bigger deal than what it is, but I feel like maybe it's one of the things where I think they did touch on it in commentary mm. that the UK, like the wrestling scene is nothing compared to the States because mm. you've got kids growing up, like going to high school wrestling, college wrestling, like mm. all these different forms of wrestling that they have there. They're just way more advanced, way far superior in terms of the wrestling. And us British people cannot catch them unless you go over to the States and start training with them sort of people. Because, of mm. course, we've probably got some good wrestlers here, but mm. not to the level or quality of probably anywhere near the Americans. No. So I think that's that's one point uh, with Darren. I mm. think my mm. second uh, thought process is I'm worried that he's going to become a nearly man. Like, oh, he, he nearly got there. Oh, oh he was almost there. <laughs> like, I feel like he's already started with that. Like, no. obviously, when he was a welterweight, he'd come in and he was doing well, and then he fought uh, Woodley, and then he was just completely different, like, mm. different mm. kettle of fish. Like, mm. polar opposites. Like, you could see Woodley was a champ for a reason, mm -hmm. and Till wasn't ready for it. Mm -hmm. So that was his first, like, oh, he was almost there. Mm. Then obviously, a couple of fights later, then he's moved up to middleweight. And I've watched him and I've fought. He looked good against, was his first fight, it was Gastelum, right? It was, it, I think that's what his debut at middleweight was. I think, I think it, it was, was yeah. Yeah. No, and, and, and he looked good in that fight. And then obviously, then he fought Whitaker. And 
yes, it was a chess piece, like it was very like evenly matched, but he didn't get there, and he mm-hmm. was a ne- nearly again. Mm. Then he's fighting Brunson, someone who's on the rise. He's already fought the champion, lost to Adesanya. He's come back, rebuilt himself, got a lot of wins under his belt, fighting Till, mm-hmm. and he looked like he was. He looked Till looked like he was out of his depth, like on the stand up, and he even hurt Brunson before the finish. The finish he yeah. Got, yeah, he he just went too far. Like he he saw that he was hurt, and he went in for yeah. the kill. Yeah, exactly. And he you can tell he was a bit. Down. I think Darren had that sense of urgency. He didn't want to. He didn't want to be in there with Brunson. I don't think he felt that pressure on the bottom, and he was. You you could tell because the finish when Brunson got him down that last time, you saw him sort of just give up. If you yeah yeah, he, saw like his slow, soul he almost just sort of like goes he's limp. like fuck like, again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he felt that pressure in there, and I think that's why he sort of rushed him when he hurt him. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think Till needs to. I think he needs to take some time and really polish up his ground game. I think, I think if, he can, might... if he can do that, I think he'll be all right. Just polish up your defense on the ground, and I think he'll be all right. Because even when he did start defending the takedown, he did look good. Yeah, like when he was he stuffed a few, the didn't he? There was a point, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. when Brunson was going for a couple of them, and he was. He was struggling to get him down there. Till was defending all of them. Yeah. So I think he he does have a good base. Of course he does. Like he, mm. he he's ranked near the top for a reason. He's beat top names for a reason. Mm-hmm. But he just needs to work on certain things. And I think a little bit similar to uh, Kevin Holland when he he's like good on the feet and mm. he, he can't wrestle. Kevin Holland can't wrestle. No. <laughs> uh, obviously now he's yeah. trying to learn like he's taking that time to learn exactly I think exactly if till found a training camp i think he should go to the states train over there for four months or yeah. something like that and just work on your wrestling you can have some new training partners mm. have a new coach like you don't have to switch like coaches like exactly. just for like, a period of time just get some more tools in the toolbox mm-hmm. do you know yeah. what i mean no i i agree because I think a lot of people make the mistake of switching camps, uh, switching coaches completely. They'll yeah. leave their team and all that. And I, I don't believe in that. I feel like that's, uh, you should stay with the team that sort of made you and that got you here. Mm-hmm. However, I don't think that should sort of restrict you from training with, in, oh, with other camps for a period of time yeah. if you need yeah. to. Yeah. Um, I think he really, I agree. I think he needs to go over to the States and get some proper wrestling time in and, and yeah. some BJJ time as well. Yeah, I yeah. think BJJ is, I don't know what he what belt he's got, or, but he, <laughs> <laughs> he needs some work on his BJJ. I, man. I think on his record, he has one win by submission, I think, off the top of my head. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know what his ground game is like because we haven't really seen it. We've seen his ground game from getting taken down, but not him transitioning, trying to get submission and stuff like that. Mm, I mm. think he likes the knockout too much, but mm. he's got to be well-rounded because this is MMA, not boxing or Thai boxing, because it isn't his background like Muay Thai or, or something like that. Yeah, he was big in the Muay Thai scene in, in the UK, and I think he went to yeah. Japan as well. Yeah, he did. Yeah, because he's got that stance when he stands and his shoulders are up and his chest is back and his hands are there. Like he's got that typical stance. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's hope Till can get it together, man. We're we're all behind you, the UK. Yeah. We all want you. Yeah. We want to see you win. Do you know what I mean? We want to see you get that gold. And I, I can see he wants it so badly. So uh-huh. I sort of like his mentality and it. Yeah, he's got the men- He's got the championship mentality, I think. Yeah. And he just needs to. Polish up a couple things and he'll be he'll be there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Good. He'll always be around the top, like regardless of whether he goes and gets like works on takedown defense, uh, mm. attempting takedowns, even just attempting takedowns to mix it up because it will open up like more stri- like striking for him. Mm. But mm. it'll still always be around the top. But if he wants to be with within one or two like ranks, then he does need to definitely work on it. Mm-hmm. I agree. That being said, what, what what do you think? Who do you think is next then in the middleweight division? For Branson, obviously you got for for the oh for the gold. I mean for the gold. Oh, for, oh, so who should fight? Obviously you got yeah, you got Whitaker. Uh, but okay, what what do you think is next for Branson? 
for for Brunson, I think it's probably if he wants to stay active rather than wait, because I think it's a given that Whitaker Adesanya two is happening. Mm. So I would already have that fight booked in my head, and I wouldn't even try and make a claim for Brunson to fight ahead of Whitaker. I think no, Whitaker, Whitaker is next. a clear front runner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think the only fight that does make sense is probably Cannonier, only because he's the only one coming off a win. Yeah, he's pretty much. Yeah, you're right. Paulo I don't think... Who's Paulo fighting next? Paulo's fighting. He, um... Isn't he meant to be fighting Marvin Vittori? Or that's the one. Yeah, Vittori. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, think, I think that would be a good. That's going to be a good fight. Yeah. It's going to be a good fight, man. Yeah. That's going to be, be a wild to see fight. What, uh, Costa is like off the wine. <laughs> mm, yeah, <laughs> it's funny how they all come up with excuses after they get beat by Izzy, man. Yeah. I just think he's a bit levels above at the moment. But I do think the second fight with Whitaker will be a different story. I, I could picture it going the full five rounds. I don't think it would be as simple as one of the two knocking each other out. I think it will be more like the Till um, versus Whitaker fight. I think it will be more of a chess match. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think Whitaker it, realises, because he went in there that first time, I think Izzy got under his skin a lot, didn't he? Yeah. He was and trying I, to take it. Yeah, he went in there. He looked bigger than he normally did. He was lunging in a lot, winging yeah. shots. He yeah. just wanted to get him out of there. And I think yeah. I think he recognises now how good he truly is. Yeah. You have to do a bit more than just try and take his head off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's going to have to be a tactical chess match. He's going to have to find his angles and try to get his way in there. Yeah. That's going to be a good fight, man. I think the middleweight division is a little bit, not all over the place, but it is very lacklustre of like... It sort of is, though, but that, that's all. That's testament to, to Izzy, really. Of he's, course. Yeah. He's beat everyone there, really. Yeah. The only ones... He's calling out people who who he hasn't beat, who aren't yeah. even contenders. That's, that's how much he's, do you know what I mean, beating people. He wants to fight Till and, you know, Cannoneer, who's not really... Yeah got up there yet and yeah it's it's tough it's it's tough for Izzy because if he beats Whitaker where does he go then? I think I saw in an interview recently from him that he wants to lap everyone like he doesn't mm. care if he rematches the same people he just wants to show how good he is mm. which I think is fair and probably is inevitable it's in at some point it will move up mm. Uh, mm. Permanently to probably reside in the light heavyweight division, but I don't think that will be for a while. Mm. Uh, so I think he probably will have to lap a couple of people. Um, and he's on his way. Yeah, yeah. And as time goes on, I think maybe some new contenders will arise. Maybe he, Usman, uh, fancies moving up. I know he didn't. I know Usman said he didn't want to move up whilst Adesanya was champion, but. I think if it gets to the point where Adesanya's beaten everyone, Usman's beaten everyone, I think why not? Like, mm -hmm. even if they are friends, to just challenge themselves against each other just to see like what they're both made of. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've seen Adesanya be in that moment against Gastelum. Like he, like he has to go out there and get this done. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen Usman in that position. So if Usman can get through all of his fights and he doesn't be put in that position I know obviously the Cobbett fight was close but he wasn't mm. in that like desperate moment all beaten up like how Izzy was with his face looking all over the place mm. I think it could be something that happens in the future maybe but it's all dependent on what happens with Adesanya because at the moment I, the only person I could see maybe giving him a good contest is Wirka mm. uh, I think he probably beats everyone else in that top two I think yeah I agree I think he beats Brunson again uh, mm -hmm. I think Brunson's done well to get himself back to where he is. 100%. So I'll give him credit for that. He's done well. But uh, watching him against Till, there were so many openings on the feet. And if Till's catching him like that, Izzy's a yeah. sniper. You know what I mean? He'll yeah. get him out of there quick. Uh, yeah. He's harder to take down as well. Yeah. I don't see that fight going any different from the first. I think it'll be a first round finish if they yeah. fight. But I think so. Yeah, yeah, the middleweight division, man. Interesting. What do you it think is. of the lightweight division right now? Things are things are gone. Yes. I yeah. Think it's it's very interesting because it's very strange because obviously you've got the champion who isn't and that who, who wasn't the number one ranked person mm. who is now the champion, and mm. the number one ranked person is not the champion and hasn't fought for the belt 
against the current champion. So I think it's a bit of a mess in terms. Yeah. I understand. I understand why Poirier took the McGregor fight. Like mm. anyone's going to take that fight. Like, and if you've beat him once and you know you've got his number, you're obviously going to take it, beat him again, and then go fight for the belt like he has. So I do think it's a bit of a puzzle, but I think when Oliveira fights Poirier, I think that's going to be a great fight when they do fight. Mm, I agree. I agree. I, I know you touched on uh, Connor and Dustin there. We'll we'll sort of talk about Connor a little yeah. later on. But Dubronx, I think Dubronx can get it done, man. I think he beats. I, do too. I think he beats Dustin. Dustin's a dog. He's, he's got that. I tell you what, Dustin's got the bigger heart out of those two. I think. Yeah, but when it comes to the skill levels, I think I think Charles has more more weapons, more tools to get the fight finished, and he's the more well rounded fighter. He is, he is. I I personally think, yeah. Yeah. So I think I think New Bronx will get it done, man. I, I think do think it, it will be. I think it. I think it might be similar to the uh, Michael Chandler fight in terms of he might have to face adversity again in that fight, whether he gets rocked or whether he gets like dominated on the feet and then he has to shoot for a takedown, try and look for a submission or something like that, or mm. whether he looks to just like go for like a jump in like arm triangle or something like extreme mm. to try and change something. I think he might face a little bit adversity on the back foot because I do think Poirier is a great striker mm. and. I think if we're talking strictly boxing, I do think Poirier is probably a better boxer than uh, Oliveira. Yeah. But Oliveira yeah. is still nice with his hands. Like, he's still... He can slip punches. Very polished, and, isn't he? He's got the fundamentals yeah. set. Yeah, exactly. He's and set. I think he's got very deceptive power. Like, he doesn't look like he has power, mm. but he drops fighters, and he can put Love. fighters to sleep. So mm. I do think it will be interesting. But I can see Charles probably winning by... Submission. I don't see him knocking Poirier out. Um, mm. I think he's more than likely going to win by submission. If it goes to decision, I mean, Dustin's got heart, so I, I can't see it being easy if it does go the full five rounds. I think it would have to be an all-out war if it goes five rounds. But mm. if mm. if Oliveira is going to win, like I think he's going to win, I think it's going to be by submission. Submission, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I think he's just got to be careful, keep himself composed. He mm. can't be wild like he was against um Chandler because I mean yeah, if he gets cracked like that by Dustin Dustin's yeah. a finisher man once he cracks you yeah. he doesn't he knows how to finish do you know what I mean yeah he's got that killer instinct mm, mm. so I think as long as he stays composed I think he's got it in the bag and then I think when you look further down the line and you look at the other lightweights I think I don't think there really is another contender other than Justin Gaethje. I mean, I know he's being rumoured to fight Chandler. Or he is. Sign the contract done, then, yeah. See, I saw that they'd signed the contract and then I saw something mm. about, there was something about it. they needed to be vaccinated for the fight to happen and Chandler oh. was like, what's happening? Yeah, I saw something I about that. that. Uh, yeah, I saw something about that recently by Chandler, but then I don't know if it's been re-signed or, or what's gone on there. They better re find it. Yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> These... Wait, I'm seeing him. Justin Gaethje love for Max Horn. No, as far as I can see, it's still going ahead. Okay. I'm looking forward. I think that'll be that's, that's a fight of the year contender, man. That's in November, isn't it? It's the same card as Usman Covenant, right? I think. I think so. I think so. Yeah. That's a fight yeah. of the year contender. That will be an absolute. That'll definitely be a good war. fight. Yeah. I think. Obviously, the next contender will come from that fight, but mm. then you're you're left thinking, where's the next contender coming from? Because I know you've got Dariush, but I don't know. There's something about <laughs> Dariush that just I don't know. Maybe it's because he doesn't have that it factor. Obviously, when you look at that top five, you've got a lot of characters. Mm -hmm. you've yeah, got Oliveira. You've got his story. You've got Poria. Like you've got Chandler. You've got. Gaethje, you've got all these big names, these stars, and then you've got Darius, and you're like, uh, like, what do you bring to the table? Yeah. Obviously, yes, he's got some great wins under his like, under his belt, but it's one of them things like where you can have all these names under your belt, but if you're not appreciated and loved by the fans, like mm. you're always going to be, there's always going to be something 
Do you know what I mean? Like there's something think, holding him back. Yeah, I agree. I think he needs he needs a proper win under his belt, doesn't he? Against a, a top star. So, I mean, he yeah. beat Tony, but it was, I mean, I don't know. Did you watch that fight? Yeah, I did watch it. It was oh he dominated. It, he dominated him, but it was, I don't know. It was, it was quite boring the way he, it, his style in that fight. I haven't seen much of him, to be honest. I don't know if yeah. he's all wrestling or, yeah. or what. I don't want to say boring because I feel like it's a disrespectful term to use. Yeah, of course. Yeah. In, in martial arts, they've got to be tactical. I get it. And if you're a wrestler, you're a wrestler. But yeah. um, there's something about him that just, he doesn't have that sort of excitement. That yeah, yeah. actor does he? Yeah. He needs to. I don't know. He might it's a bit do like Leon's Damian doing. Just keep winning, man. Just yeah, exactly. get names under your belt, and eventually you'll get the shot. They'll have no choice. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That should be a it's an interesting time for the lightweight division, man. It's what are your thoughts on? Let me try and think of his name. Uh, the second coming of the beef. Uh, Hamza. Hamza. Oh my God. Nah, not Hamza. The the oh. lightweight. Oh, Makashev, Islam Makashev. Oh, he's fighting RDA. They've I got think, beef, you know. Yeah, I know. I They've think that's going to be a great fight. I think uh, Makashev has a lot of hype behind him. Mm. I think maybe through his roots and ties to Habib, but Habib, yeah. I do. In my opinion, I thought because he's not fought anyone top 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 level. I've mm. always thought if he fights someone top quality, like an RDA or someone who's been through it all, he's always been around the top. I think he loses. Really? Yeah. I, th- I do think RDA beats him. And I, th- I purely think that because I feel like he's got all this hype and all these like people saying, oh, yeah, he's the next champion. He's, he's this, he's that. He, yeah. he can wrestle. He can strike. He's a better striker than Habib. He can wrestle just like Habib. Like... I still think he loses to RDA. I think RDA has this venom, and I think RDA is on a mission now. Obviously, he was in the lightweight division, lightweight champion. Yeah. It didn't work out against Eddie Alvarez. Had a couple more fights, then he went up to welterweight. Still didn't work out for him. Now he's come back down to lightweight, and I think he's got a newfound purpose. I think he's going to be a machine. Mm. I do think he's going to give him a good fight, and I think he will win. That's mm. my I know there's probably a lot of people that disagree with me for sure. I'm one of them. go on, you finish. Oh, I've, I, I've just got a feeling that I think RDA is going to be like a, I don't know, a new man. I feel like he's gonna he's gonna beat Makachev and then go on a, a win streak. But how long that win streak lasts, I'm not sure. But I definitely think he gets through Makachev. Mm. What's your thoughts? I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was coming from the initial reaction. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think Makoshev, from what I've seen of him, he looks incredibly fucking strong. Yeah. Like when he gets these guys down, like they look, you know that look that fighters have on their face when they fight Khabib. It's like fuck, this guy is so yeah. strong. Like yeah. they don't want to be there. Yeah, I'm seeing that in the opponents that that Marcus has fought so far. Mm-hmm. That being said, he's yet to fight someone of of a you know top level sort of. I think RDA is going to be his first real test. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm not. He's not fought bums. He's not fought nobodies. No, of course he's not, not fought the top contention. So I think top it's level, early to yeah. say whether he's Khabib material, like championship level. I know a lot of people are sort of like saying, you know, people who've trained with him, the DCs and the Khabib saying, oh, he's, he's next champion. He'll be this yeah. number one, all this. And prove it. Well, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Prove it to us. Yeah. Go out there. He needs to get through RDA before we can start yeah. talking about championship belts. And yeah, if he gets through RDA, then, which I think he will, yeah, I think he'll <laughs> yeah, be the shit out of RDA, if I'm honest. Really? Yeah, I think he's going to hold him down. Do you think he wins and, by TKO, or you think he wins by, like, ground and pound submission or something like that? His submission game seems very good. But RDA has got, I think he's black belt, isn't he? He is, yeah. I, I can't I've, seen RDA, I've not seen RDA submitted. I'm pretty sure I've never seen RDA submitted. 
No, I don't think I have either. I and mean, you've got to think how long RDA has been around for. A long I know. Time. <laughs> like he's like he's he's quite he's got, a, got an outstanding record. But let's not talk about these padded records that I feel like him and Habib have. So let's let's not discuss <laughs> that. But um, yeah. I do think him fighting RDA is the real test. I do think RDA brings a lot to the table that he hasn't had against him. Mm-hmm. So I do. I obviously think RDA is going to win, but only time will tell. When mm-hmm. is that fight? Do you know when that fight is? I can't remember off the top of my head. I actually don't know. Let me check the UFC calendar because I think it's coming up. I think it's soon. I think it might be on the Volkanovski Ortega card. Volkanovski. Oh, okay. We'll have to talk about it on that card. Robbie Lawler's fighting there. Uh... Nick, um, Nick, Nick, yeah. Nick is motherfucking back. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, I can't see it on that card, but that card's fucking stacked. Uh, maybe it's on that card, card, man. Got a, Dan Hooker's back. Marlon Moraes is fighting again. I like Marlon. Curtis Marais. Blades is back. Ooh, oh man, Curtis. He's against uh, Rosenstrike, isn't it? Yeah, he's against. Oh, I man. like Rosenstrike. I really like Rose and Strike. Jarzinho, Biggie Boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be a, that's a tough fight for Curtis, man. I feel for him because his knock the way he keeps getting knocked out is just horrible. Yeah. And I think when I watch him fight sometimes, I just think of Alistair Overeem. I'm just like another new man. You can't keep getting knocked out this this kind of way, man. It's not good for you. Mm-hmm. Oh man, but that card looks good. That card looks good, Nick. I'm trying to find that. That RDA fight. I don't know when it is. It's definitely soon. I'm sure it's on a big card. I'm sure mm-hmm. it is. I think it's on it's on, on one of the main cards for sure. Mm-hmm. I can't see it. I don't know. It's sometime soon, anyways. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think Markashev will get it done. I think he'll get it done. I don't think it'll be submission. I think it'll be unanimous decision. Okay, you think it will go like the full rounds? I think it's a three round. I don't think it's yeah. I think it's a three round. Yeah, yeah, three rounds, and I think it will go the whole way. Yeah, but yeah. I don't see him knock it. I don't see him knocking him out because so far from what I've seen of his stand up, it looks good. But yeah, he's not. I don't think he'll knock him out. I can't remember. I know, I know he's only got one loss on his record, but I can't remember if it was a TKO loss, a submission loss, or a decision loss. I can't remember, but I know he's got one loss. To Makhachev. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. I thought he was undefeated. I think he's 19 and 1, I think, off the top of my head. Yeah. No, you're right. He do- I think he does have a loss. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know when it came in his career or who it came against. I mean, he's not fought many top guys. I'm not saying that, obviously, his one loss was to a fight. <laughs> because, obviously, you've got to be good if you're stepping in the game, yeah. regardless yeah. of your record. So. Yeah. Cool. You've seen Conor McGregor's back... Uh... Back to uh, walking about and yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, where does he go from here, man? Where does Connor go? This this is a hard one for me because Conor McGregor is the reason that I watch MMA. He was the first person that I ever saw that drew me into MMA. The card where he fought Jose Aldo and knocked him out in 13 seconds was what drew me to McGregor. Mm. I remember sitting in my front room. I think I was watching football at the time and some advert come on. I'm seeing this dude just talking so much smack. And I'm like, who is this Irish guy? Like, what, what, what's going on? <laughs> like, what is this? I, like, I didn't even know what MMA was at this point. I was mm. like, what, what is this? And yeah. then I saw it, like, 1 a.m. this Sunday. Like, I was just like, oh, snap. I was like, all right, I'm going to watch this. And mm. that was the first card that I started watching. Obviously, watching his journey, like, in terms of, I know I didn't see the journey from beforehand mm. on his way to, to fighting for the interim and then obviously fighting for the real belt. I didn't see that journey. Obviously, I've, I've gone back and watched that since. But then I saw from that journey all the way until now to just see the trajectory and then the sudden downfall Mm. It's just hard to watch at this point. Like I, I do question like, is he still capable of doing anything? Is he finished? Like, can he ever get to the top again? I have mm. all these questions and no answers because mm-hmm. everything that I'm seeing is telling me no. Mm. It's so, true. 
It's a no, tough I mean, one. You've got to take in so many factors. He's now a lot older. He's what, 34? A 34. lot richer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He's a lot richer. Um, he's got to come back from this injury. He's got to start training again and whatnot. Mm-hmm. He's going to need a few fights to even get. I don't think he should fight anyone inside the top five just yet. I think he needs to take maybe a Dariush or something. I think stylistically, that's a perfect matchup. Yeah. I think if you think of the timeline, if you think, let's say, let's say, just for argument's sake, let's say Gaethje beats Chandler. Chandler's going to need a fight. I think if Chandler fights Dariush, I think Chandler wins. Then by that time and everything's laid out, you'd think Conor McGregor would be on his way back Mm -hmm. around that time period if you, like, work it out. I think McGregor can beat Dariush. But that's a McGregor who is the old McGregor, not this McGregor that we've seen in these past couple of fights. Mm. I think so, a, lot of, a lot of things need to need to change with him, and I, I don't know if it will. I really don't. I think he's surrounded by a lot of, of, of yes-men. You know I mean, the fact that he... Dustin was training for a long time, leading up to that third fight, and yeah. Connor only started his camp, or he only started training, what, like six six weeks out or something like that? It, it wasn't, it was too close to the fight. He should have been training from the minute he lost. He should have took a week off and got back mm-hmm. in the gym and started grinding. But you yeah. see him on his Instagram just, you know, posting videos of him sipping <laughs> sipping on his proper 12 and <laughs> all this, having cocktails by the beach and all this. And then you look at Dustin and he's there in the, in the gym, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Putting in the hard yeah. work. So I think, I think if Connor wants to, to sort of get back into title contention. And I think he can if he does the right things. Look at Jose Alda, for instance. I think he can, but he needs to change. He needs to change so much, man. He's got to change a lot of things. And I think he's got a... He needs a proper coach as well. I think he's, he's okay. almost his own coach, isn't he? I can't believe he went into the second fight. Like, with base, bare, like barely any changes, really. Um, he just started blasting Dustin's leg and thought that would get him the victory, which yeah, and you saw how you saw how that went. He just got he got battered. He, yeah, he didn't change much in his uh his approach of attack in terms of his boxing. He he got countered. He slipped and countered, similar to how he did the first fight against Dustin, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it didn't look good for him on the feet. If I if I'll be honest, like if if that fight didn't end. The way it, it did, did, I think he would have got knocked out. Mm-hmm. I, think. I think it would have been very similar to the second fight in terms of the... I think it would have been almost the identical finish. The yeah. couple of shots, but he's compromised with his legs, except I think in the, th- the third fight, if it would have carried on, mm-hmm. he obviously wasn't compromised with his legs at that point. Yeah. I think he would have still had the back against the cage. Oh, I've got nowhere to go. Bish, bash, bosh. Mm-hmm. And then it's done. Mm. I, I think an interesting thing with Connor. I think I think he. Sh- I know we spoke about this earlier about this whole changing camp. I I really do, I am a big fan of John Kavanagh, and I do like John Kavanagh as like what I've seen of him as a person, as a coach, mm-hmm. and all of that like thing. But I think in MMA you don't see many champions with coaches who are not well known for coaching multiple champions Mm -hmm. or multiple people if you Mm -hmm. look at all the champions like they're coming from uh, american top team aka obviously you've got um the dude that's training izzy like he's he's training quite a few top ranked people yeah yeah, there's some serious work that can you know what i mean like i and do you know you're gonna find this interesting do you know who i think is the perfect coach for conor mcgregor Mm. it's never going to happen I reckon you're going to say I know it's not going to happen you're going to say something like Trevor Whitman exactly yeah I I think he would be the perfect coach for Like striking would be levels wouldn't it exactly if you think like you've got obviously Farasa Harvey says that McGregor has the touch of death like when he hits that left hand if he hits you with that left hand you go to sleep and I think I don't know, what, but since coming into the lightweight division, he hasn't really been sleeping people like he used yeah, to in featherweight. Hasn't, hasn't. I think but, do you know what it is? I think I think this is where 
his his he he had that he was a lightweight at featherweight, like he was big, he was He's very big. Yeah, yeah, you see what he's off to get out of yeah. yeah, I think obviously he could put people to sleep like that because he had that power mm-hmm. and he had that precision. I think if he was training with Trevor Whitman, you've seen what Trevor Whitman has done to Usman. He's mm-hmm. gone from a wrestler who can't really strike. Like, he can strike, but not to the point where he can light you up to being able to KO Masvidal cold. Mm-hmm. Like, I think if you take someone that already has McGregor's striking mm-hmm. power, precision, timing, mm-hmm. and how he counters, mm-hmm. oh, you'd be looking at probably one of the best strikers to ever grace the sport. It's true. It's I, true. I think the the tactics and the adjustments that he could make, like, if you look at Rose Namajunas as well, look at her striking. Oh, Thug Rose. Absolute it's, beast. Her strikes do not look the most powerful in terms of, but they are so precise so that precise. she will hit you on that button, whether mm. it's hit at fifty uh, percent or whether it's hit at hundred percent. If she hits you on the button like she has done so many times to so many different fighters, mm-hmm. I think that's key to McGregor. But mm-hmm. obviously, Justin Gaethje, Trevor Whitman, it's never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, you don't see that. You don't see many people competing at the same weight class under the same coach. You don't see that often. Mm-hmm. It's a very rare thing. So obviously, we all know that's never going to happen. But in a dream world, I think that is what is best for McGregor. And if McGregor ever wants to get to the top again, I think that's the decision that needs to be made. But yeah, it's it's an unlikely scenario. I think that he becomes champion again. It could be done. I'm not saying it's not possible. But for him to do it, he has to change so many things. And I don't know if he's willing to do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He has to abandon this lifestyle of, you know, sipping on pina coladas and proper 12 on and the beach side. Watches, yeah. Just, and pulling up on a yacht. And... Yeah. He, he needs to abandon all that and just literally put his, dedicate his life to MMA once again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. Yes, unfortunately not. I mean, it's it's a sad thing to think of. Like he's this mm. superstar that's just falling from falling from the top. Mm. And I think unless he gets a good coach that catches him and pushes him back up the ranks, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I can't I can't see him. I can't. In reality, what is he ranked now? I think number nine or between mm. number nine or number oh, twelve, yeah. something like yeah. that. I I think. I don't see him breaking into that top five unless he's fighting Darius and he has m- mad changes because I think, I do think Darius could obviously beat him, uh, but I do think McGregor wins the fight. But if Darius comes in and starts wrestling and taking him down, and McGregor, McGregor's good at defense, but against Habib, he was terrible. But for, mm. for like later on when he got tired at the beginning, he was good, the only person to win around against Habib. But mm. I think. If he's to get into the top five, the only way he gets in is by beating Dariush. Otherwise, I don't think he touches the top five mm. when he comes back. I agree. I agree. I think, to be honest, I want to see him stick around. Do you know what I mean? He's a showman. And I think whenever McGregor fights, I speak for all of us when I say, I want to feel like we want to tune in. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. exactly. We want, everyone wants to tune in. It's just it's exciting when he fights. There's, there's no fight week like a McGregor fight week. I think. Yeah, all the hype and the build up and the back and forth. Another thing, uh, I mean, it's taken away from the fighting. Uh, obviously, mm. I was a McGregor fan, and I say was because I'm still a McGregor fan to watch. But in terms of an actual fan, uh, he, he lost me as a fan in terms of when he rail, started actually. saying certain things and talking about people's wives, posting mm. pictures of uh, Dustin Poirier's kids, and then deleting it. Like talking about Habib's dad and COVID, I just I just think he's gone too far. He's a bit too much of a wild man now. Mm. Like he's just like, of course, I'm all for the trash talk and watching that trash talk between him and Habib was one of the most intense things I've probably ever watched in terms of like a real life situation, wow. bringing up things that no one had ever heard, talking about this family member, this person's in prison, you took money from this guy, talking about Ali Abdelaziz, like it, it was just a bit of a mess. It was. And I think ever since then, he's not been the same. Do you know what I mean? He's just overstepped the mark. He's not the same clever, witty guy like, when he came onto the stage, when he was late, talking about his rock, 
rocking that Gucci jacket and without me, this whole ship sinks and da 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 da. Mm. Like that, that was vintage. That's perfect, McGregor. Like if he would stay like that, but instead of going too far, like he's mm. just touched on things too much. Mm, mm. No, I agree. I agree. I think I think he needs to take a uh, take some time. Obviously, heal up from his injury. Mm-hmm. I think he should fight Nate next. So I don't. 100%. I'll be honest. I think if he loses, to, uh, he's he's about one or two losses away from just being like, what? Why do we want to watch this guy fight? Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? If he if he loses more, I think he needs to fight Nate. And take that fight seriously, mm-hmm. and hopefully get the W. It's not an easy task because I think Nate. I actually lean more towards Nate to win that fight if they fight. Yeah, agreed. Nate, agreed. I feel like Nate's got like stronger. He's got. He's getting better. Yeah. Just me. Yeah. No, I agree with you. What? Who? Who was his last fight again? Leon. Leon, yeah. Leon, and oh Leon. my god, that <laughs> <round. laughs> oh. He's just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Leon, you're my boy, but seriously, man, Jesus Christ. Oh, that was very, that was very uh that was very vintage mate. Like he took like punishment mm. for a while and then he just bang lands that punch and he could have finished it if he really he wanted trying to. Trying to find but... it the whole fight, you could see him. Mm-hmm. But I think Leon got lazy that last round and, and yeah. You know what I mean? Sort of yeah, he did. He did. But um, no, nah, Nate looks Nate looks good. I think he's a scary man to fight for anyone, Nate, because you you know every second the fight goes longer, he gets stronger. And exactly. It's gonna get harder for you because he's not turning yeah. up. Do you know what I mean? He picks up in yeah. the later rounds, and I think against McGregor, if they fight, it, it needs to be a three round fight. Mm. If McGregor wants to win, yeah, but I know yeah. they're not going to do that. It's going to be a five round main event. A hundred percent. It's going to be so tough for him, man. And I think if he loses that fight, he's done. I it. think. Done. I think in reality, there's probably. I mean, me, me as like I'm still a fan in terms of watching McGregor, but supporting him like and his antics, like I can't do that. But in terms of fighting, I think there's only two fights that I'd want to see McGregor have now. I don't want to see him fight anyone in the top five. So there's two fights. He either fights Diaz or he fights RDA. And I think the fight against RDA is a very tough fight for Marega. I think I thought it was going to be a tough fight. Say that again, sorry. You think so? Yeah. I think I think the first obviously when it was scheduled the first time, RDA versus McGregor, I thought that would be a hard fight. Because at that point, you obviously you saw what happened in terms of the uh, Mendez fight and the takedowns and stuff. He kind of took McGregor down at ease. And you've got to think RDA is 10 times better than Mendes on the ground in terms of submissions and stuff like that. You saw what Nate Diaz done to him. McGregor on the ground. Yes, McGregor was tired and he'd been rocked and he kind of gave up, turned his back and stuff like that, rolled mm. over. I think even now, I think it might even be more dangerous him fighting RDA. Mm. Because when you think of the fact of what's happened with McGregor and how he's looked, I don't think... To my knowledge, I don't think has RDA had a fight at lightweight since he's come back down. He might have had one fight, I think, since he come down from welterweight. I think he's still yeah. top quality. Like, yeah. yeah, he might not be top like three or whatever. He's still a good fighter. And I think McGregor coming off all of these losses. I say all of these losses. He he's coming off quite a few losses. Yeah, um, I have a lot of losses. Yeah. Who was that guy in the press conference? He was like, yeah, he yeah. was like, uh, you've won one fight since Barack Obama since- was president. <laughs> Which is oh true. mate, it's, it's true, and uh, I I do think it, personally, I think I think both of them would be a good fight. I think RDA gives McGregor a lot of problems, and I think Nate gives McGregor a lot of problems. And I think those are the only two fights that I'd want to watch as a fan because I feel like if he fought anyone in the top five other than Darius, and I I think I sound quite disrespectful to Darius thinking that McGregor can just walk in and knock him out. I don't Darius, I don't think that at all. Respect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I I just think that's the that's the most likely fight that he can win mm-hmm. out of all of the top five. Mm-hmm. I think Tony Ferguson would be a great fight, but again, I wouldn't want to see that either because I do think McGregor could lose to Tony Ferguson, even though Tony Ferguson has been on a downward spiral. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? The next sort of year of MMA is going to be very interesting. Oh, I think by the end of next year, 
we could be looking at a few different champions, a few different decision uh, divisions. Yeah. John Jones, he's coming back to heavyweight, isn't he? He's going to go for that heavyweight. That's an belt. interesting one. That's a, that's an interesting one. I mean, yeah. I, I do question what's got what's going on in that whole debacle. Like he he was come, he's going to fight in Ghana. He's gained all this way. He's going to fight. Okay, he wants to fight. Okay, he wants this much money. The UFC. I think no, he'll do it. I think he'll do money. it. He's training. He's, 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 he's big now. He's fucking big. I know. He's massive. He's, he's very big. Jesus Christ, he's a big fucking dude. And I the think... thing that I find interesting most about that is the fact that Nganu hits like a train. Obviously, everyone knows how powerful Nganu is. It's scary. Jesus. Scary. Mm. I obviously Jones hasn't fought against anyone that can crack as hard as Nganu. Mm. So I think we haven't seen Jones take a punch, like take a real punch from someone the size of Ngannou. So I'm like, what's going to happen? Do you know what I mean? Mm. He's got a solid chin though. Jones has taken some shots and we've never really seen him rock. rock. I've never seen Jones rock. You've seen him take a punch and be like, oh, that was a good punch. I've never seen him rocked or wobbled ever. So he's... I don't know. I think he's, he's got a solid chin. But against Ngannou, against Ngannou, you can have a chin of steel, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's getting tested. Do you think it's one of those things where a light heavyweight is not going to hit as hard as a heavyweight? Like, do you, I know, obviously, he's fought people that can hit hard. Obviously, mm-hmm. he's, fought, he's fought a lot of people that can hit hard. But I think heavyweight is a different type of power. And I feel like when he experiences that heavyweight power especially if he's going straight in and fighting and garnet i think personally my outlook is he loses jones loses if he fights in garnet that's just my opinion i just think in is too powerful he's getting better his takedown defense is getting better you saw what happened against stipe he can he has ground game like i've seen him submit people I've, i think he's had two submission wins in the ufc if i'm not mistaken i know he's definitely got one by kimura I'm kimura sure. i remember that yeah yeah and I think he might have another one in the UFC, but I just can't remember if it was an armbar or not. Um, so, it, an armbar. I'm pretty sure yeah, God has uh, never done uh, an armbar. Right. Let me, you know what? Let me check. Let me check. <laughs> That's just a funny thought to imagine him, but if <laughs> trying to fucking yank on him. someone's arm. Right. Jesus right. Christ. Let me see if I can find it. Just uh, taking a punch me. off him wasn't bad enough. Yeah, I know. Have him yanking on your arm. Jesus. So he has. Oh, he's got. He's actually got four wins by submission on his record. No way. But not all of them have been in the UFC. Uh, so yeah. yeah, but his first his first win was an armbar. No um, way. Yeah, and then he's got an arm triangle choke, uh, a guillotine choke, yeah, no, and then Mora. Okay. Okay, Nganu. Okay. <laughs> there was somewhere where I, I knew I saw an arm bar somewhere. Like, I didn't know if it was in the UFC or not. But um, yeah. 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 So I, I, I think, think it's going to be um, it's going to be tough for Jones, man. It's going to be tough. I, I don't want to be biased because he's my favorite fighter. No, of course. And yeah. I, I so badly want to say, yeah, Jones will win, I think. But in reality, I think. Uh, it favours Nganu, doesn't it? Mm. I think Nganu is the favourite in every fight he goes in. I, I don't see yeah. any fight that he goes into that he's not the favourite, other than potentially Cyril Garn. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. I know a lot of people think that Cyril Garn is actually going to beat Nganu. And I think it's down to a couple of factors. Mm-hmm. The, the fear factor isn't there. Because they were training partners. You're not, you've already felt what it's like to spar with him. I know fighting is a completely different thing than sparring. But you've already felt his size, his power, his reach, his striking. Like You've you felt his clinch. you felt his takedowns. You, you know what he's about. Mm-hmm. Whether they train together for a long time or a short time, I don't know. Because I think there's only been maybe one or two clips of them training together at mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. But even that small amount of time with someone that you might fight later on down the line it gives you a lot going into the fight mm, mm. And I've I seen the think... sparring footage and, and Cyril Garn looks good man Yeah, he looks like he was and... getting the better of Nganu in the exchanges and he could take the punches as well, I could see Nganu hitting him with some punches and he didn't look phased 
Yeah, he uh, has that uh, technical ability. You, you like you've got, mm. as you would say, this is this is not in a disrespectful way to Ngannou because Ngannou is one of my favourite fighters to watch. You have the brawn and you have the brains. Mm-hmm. I feel like the brains is gone, and Absolutely. obviously you've got obviously Ngannou. You know what he's like. He a lot of people like I've the got the English guy that fought at the weekend. I think his name Aspil or something like that. Um, he's English heavyweight. He spoke about Ngannou not after the fight, before the fight. He mm-hmm. spoke about the Garn fight versus Ngannou and how he thinks it will go. He think he thought that Garn is going to win because he's the more technical fighter. He mm-hmm. thinks obviously Ngannou is a little bit more wild. I think Ngannou is is basically the MMA version of Deontay Wilder, except I'd, like they both have very different techniques to everyone else in that division. Mm-hmm. But they get the job done. Of course, obviously, Wilder hasn't got the job done recently against uh, Fury. Uh, and Ngannou hasn't got the job done on a couple of occasions because of whether it was a mental block or whatever was going on. I think now he's got that mentality of a champion, that mentality of, oh, I- I'm really this good. Like, no so one's going to take it. I've got it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I do, I do think that's going to be a great fight. I think it could go one or two ways. It could be a Ngannou early stoppage, just goes in there and steamrolls him by hitting him with a like punch. Like he did to oh. Yeah, yeah. Literally oh. ran through his punches. <laughs> oh <laughs> and he just fell out like all over the place. Looked like an action man. Like it's just been oh, yeah, twisted up know. by a kid. I know. Ngannou, he's a freak, man. He's a freak of nature. He looks like something like a flipping out of a lab, like a lab somewhere. Like yeah, yeah. fucking science like experiment, man. He's a freak. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting time for the fight world, man. Yeah. I think this time next year, it's going to be, man, it, things could look so different. 100%, especially with all the fights coming up on the horizon, you know, belts, belts could change fast. Like, you've got a lot of people that aren't champions that could be champions. You've got mm-hmm. Max Holloway that should, in my opinion, should be a champion. I don't think he's lost both of those fights. So, Okay, question. Question. Yes. Before we wrap this up. Yes. By the end of next year, who do you think is the champion every division? <sighs> okay. Let's, let me bring up the rankings. Let's bring um, up the rankings. All right, let's, let's bring up the rankings. Okay. So and we'll you know what? At... Sorry, go on. No, go on. You first. You first. I was going to say, do you know what's funny? I did. I did actually do this uh, not so long ago, and I I put I wrote up the champions that I think that will be champions by the end of twenty twenty one. But that that can be another conversation because I did write that up like uh, about six months ago towards the beginning of the year, mm-hmm. and one of them was quite funny. It was roses. I think you said it was the list, didn't you? Yeah, I did. And yeah. one of them was uh, that uh, Wei Li would lose the belt and recapture it by the end of the year. She's Whoa. lost the belt. Whoa. What if she recaptures it by the end of the year? I, w- I would have predicted that. Man. That would have been something that I would have been like, wow, like, I actually mm. like, did come up with something quite good. But uh, mm. let's I'm see. looking forward to that fight, dude. Yeah, it's, it's to going that. to be a great right. fight. I think uh, yeah. you'll get a different, different perspective of both of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Right, I'm, Bailey I'm was making so many excuses, now. wasn't she? Yeah. <laughs> she was finding every excuse under the sun. Yeah. She's like, the fans were chanting too loud and all this. And oh my That's God. Like, you know, <laughs> well, you want them to sit there in silence. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Crazy. Okay. So looking at the divisions. Okay. So let's go women's. Oh. Okay. Let's go women's. Straw weight. Straw weight. Okay. Yeah. So oh, this is a tough one. Because I'm a I'm a big fan of Rose. And watching what she's done, like whenever she's got her back against the wall, she seems to pull it out of the bag. Mm-hmm. But whenever she's like seems to be in a good headspace, it's like she loses. So I'm like, does, is she gonna beat? Whaley in a rematch yeah. or is she going to maintain the belt and I think it's a really hard one for me to call I think I think my head tells me I think my head tells me Whaley but my heart tells me Rose so I'll go with my heart and say Rose will still be the champion at the end of the year or mm-hmm. as of next year end of next year okay yeah 
Um, no, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you, and I'm going to say Joanna. No, 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 I'm joking. Don't <laughs> <laughs> give me a heart attack. <laughs> I think I don't know. It's I think it will be either one of the two. I think it will either be Wei Lee or it will be Rose. I think they're. I think they're quite a bit ahead of the others in the division. Um, I do still think Johan is a contender, but we haven't seen her fight for a while, so I don't know how she's I been. I don't know if she'll come back next year. Um, I don't really know what's going on with her because obviously we haven't seen her for so long. I feel like she's just. I feel like she wants to come back. Probably for having a break. Shot the belt, but... Yeah, you're probably just having a break. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think. You know, I haven't thought about this before now, but I do think that Whaley, I agree with you. I think Whaley will recapture the belt and I think she'll be champion at the end of next year. So that my initial that was my initial thought. At the beginning of this year, I thought Whaley could lose the belt along along the way and I think she'd recapture it. But I think now if I'm put on the spot and I have to decide, I have to go with what my heart says and not my head because my head tells me that Wei Li will come back with a vengeance and really... I think so. He's going to come back with some venom in her strikes. Mm, she'll time. pressure her a lot more, I think, as well. Exactly. But obviously, only time will tell with that. I hope Rose wins. I hope Rose wins because I'm a huge fan of Rose. Exactly. Love Rose. Exactly. But <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think Wei Li might, might get it done. Another ring. person that I'm interested to see fight a top contender, and I really would like to see her fight Joanna, is Mackenzie Dern. I, I enjoy watching Mackenzie Dern because I think her style is very awkward. Like mm. her striking isn't very polished, but she does have, when she does connect, she does have some power behind her, and she's ranked number four. So she isn't far off. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, she's fighting soon against, uh, Looking to see Mackenzie against Dern. someone else. Uh, I think she's fighting against the Yan. I don't even know how to say her surname. I'm not sure. I haven't seen much of Mackenzie Dern, I don't think. I th I've watched, I think, because I watched... Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, I've seen her fight before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Her ground game, because obviously she's a black belt. She, she was a world uh, world champion in jiu-jitsu. She was outstanding. And I think that that you don't really have many of them in the strawweight division that are good on the ground to the point where... If it goes to the ground, you know you're going to lose. And I think Mackenzie Dern brings that to the table. And yeah. that's what makes it an interesting... Like That's why I want to see her fight against a Johanna, someone who can strike and really put the pressure on you. Because mm. I want to see how Mackenzie Dern would cope with that. Because obviously she's not got the hands of Johanna. She's not got the kicks of Johanna. But she does have the ground game that could probably beat everyone in that division. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Time will tell. We'll Agreed. see on that one. Okay, so moving on, which division is next? I think we're looking at women's flyweight. Flyweight, yeah, women's flyweight. Oh, I don't I see. Uh, no brainer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's much to that's say simple. on this one, man. This Valentina Shevchenko. Let's move on. <laughs> Hitman, she is. Yeah. Assassin. Yeah, no, I don't see. I don't see anyone beating her in that division. I mean, you got what Jessica Andrade. I don't see her beating her. Kate Nishikagian, Lauren Murphy. I don't see any of these people beating her. She's just no, I mean, levels no, above everyone in that division. Yeah. I think the only person that can beat her is Amanda Nunes. And even mm -hmm. still, that last fight was razor One close. Time. Razor yeah. close. Um, yeah, I think she's still champ at the end of next year. Agreed. Um, next division, we're looking at women's... Bantamweight. Yeah, women's bantamweight. Uh, again, I think it's a no-brainer for me. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't yeah. see Amanda losing it. To no. be honest. I do think um, Juliana Pena will be a will be a good fight. And I know it's been rescheduled for December. I think mm -hmm. I do think it will be a good fight. I think it will be a competitive fight in the early rounds. But I do think Nunes probably wins by KO or mm -hmm. TK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, just, I, I agree. think she's Nunes a, is she's like an animal, man. She's a beast. Yeah, I think I. I think if someone asked me, like genuinely asked me, who are your top five fighters that you enjoy watching? We should do this on the next episode. Yeah. Uh, I think I do think Nunes is in my top five, regardless, male or female. I do mm -hmm. find her so fascinating to watch because of just how how leaps and bounds she is above people with her striking. Like I haven't seen anyone that strikes and can really crack you and put your lights out. You see it in her opponents' faces when 
I don't think any of them expect it. They, they watch her fights and they think, oh, yeah, she's beatable. She does this, that. But when they get in there, the, like the shock on their face when they hit, when they get cracked by Amanda, yeah. it's like you can see, like, they're yeah, like, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is fucking crazy. Um, yeah, no, I don't see, I, I don't see her losing the belt. Um, I think, in either divisions. I think moving on to the featherweight, I I think this is a this is a division that doesn't really exist. It, yeah, it, it doesn't, does it? I don't see any. I don't see anyone in the rankings on the, on the website. There's literally yeah, no one. It's, it's just a division that doesn't exist. I think if if Amanda Nunes, I do think um, the lady that is f- currently fighting in the PFL, I think I think her name is Kayla Harris. Oh, is that the middleweight? Harris, the middleweight girl. Um, is that middleweight Chuck, or lightweight or something? I think I think it's lightweight. Yeah, Kayla Harris, the wrestler. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I, th- I think if anyone was going to give Nunes a good fight, it would probably be her. But I don't, th- I don't know whether she could make that. Uh, we'll be able to make weight. weight pass. Yeah, She's exactly. Middleweight, I believe. She's huge. Yeah. She, she is. She is. Uh, and yeah. I mean that yeah. in the nicest way possible. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know what I mean. She's, she's, yeah. a, she's, she's huge. So, yeah, I don't think she'll make that weight. I, d- I think if she could make that uh, weight, I think that would be an amazing fight to see. Or even if they did it at catch weight, just as a challenge, I think that would be a great fight. But that's mm-hmm. the only person that I think could maybe give Nunes a, a good, a good like fight. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think her, her and Valentina. But I, th- I don't know. We've seen how that fight has gone twice or three times. Yeah. Or whatever. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would like to see it again. Just because it's always fun when those two step in the ring together, but and I think in that time period, I think both of them have got a lot better for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've seen how uh, devastating Shevchenko can be with her precision striking, mm-hmm. and you've seen how deadly Nunes can be with her power. I mm-hmm. think, I think there's a new element to that fight if it was to happen again. But either way, I mean, Nunes can't go down in weight to fight her because obviously she's too big and Valentina Shevchenko can only go up and fight her. I think that one Valentina is always going to be a disadvantage having to come up in weight class now that she's a flyweight. I think her coming back up to ban on weight, I feel like she'd be at a disadvantage doing that. And I do think Nunes has has grown in <clears throat> excuse me, grown in stature in terms of size when she's fought at featherweight. I think maybe making that uh, that weight drop to to ban and weight is a little bit more different now. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah, interesting times, isn't it? I think if we talk about the flyweight division, I think that's very exciting now with Brandon Moreno as the champion. I really like him. I like his story as well. I mean, I, I remember watching the Ultimate Fighter when he was on the Ultimate Fighter. Mm-hmm. And obviously he left the UFC since then because he got cut and then come back and won the belt. And what what fashion he won the belt obviously the first fight against uh, Figueroa was a uh, was a good fight it was very back and forth a lot of people thought Figueroa won the fight mm-hmm. but the second fight wow I thought he put in a great performance and mm-hmm. I don't think he'll I don't think he'll lose the belt I think even if they have a rematch I think his mentality and I think his heart I think he has a lot of heart mm-hmm. I think that will carry him through to still be champion in a year's time mm-hmm. So he's so likable, isn't he, Brandon Moreno? Yeah, he's very so likable. You see, it's weird because you see people like, I'll take Leon for instance, who's on a mad fight win streak, but he can't seem yeah. to get the people behind him. Yeah, and then you'll see Brandon, who's not on a like big win streak, just come <laughs> out of nowhere, have one sort of spotlight, and everyone fucking likes him. Like, he's got yeah. so many followers and everything. Yeah. Like people just love him. Yeah, it's one of those things you just have it or you don't. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But he's he's great, man. I think in terms of being champion this time next year, I don't know. I don't know if I can... I, I feel like if he fights Figueredo again... Yeah. He could he could win. Figueredo could win it. I think Figueredo is too big for the weight class, first of all. Yeah, agreed. I think he suffers a lot with the weight. Uh, the weight he class. does. I think he needs to go up, man. I think he needs to go up. He's killing his body. He's... I think he'll be more powerful um, going up. Yeah, it's bad. He'll be knocking dudes out left, right, and center if he goes up. Mm-hmm. He's, he's got serious power in his hands, and his striking is wicked. 
Yeah. Um, and he's got good ground game as well. He's just he's great. He's well rounded. Um, yeah. But in terms of champion next year, I don't know if I see Moreno being champ. Um, if Figueredo doesn't get it back, then yes. But if if Figueredo gets it back, then I think he'll be he, he'll hold it. Yeah, that's a good shout. Mm -hmm. What yeah. do you think for the bantamweight division? I mean, you've got Aljamain Sterling as the champion at the moment. Oh my up. god, Aljo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aljo cracks me up, man. He cracks me up. Did you see all those like things he was doing after he won the fight? Like he was going out trying to make fights with Chris <laughs> B and just oh man. Do you know what? I felt a bit sorry for him after the fight. I think he got a lot of stick for something that obviously <laughs> isn't his fault. Do you know what I mean? Like okay. It was funny <laughs> though, man. The way did you see when he was like you could tell he was playing it up? He was like <sighs> like proper like playing up to the cameras and stuff. And I was just I was watching it like this, like. Is he okay? Like obviously, oh, I, I get like he shouldn't have been taking pictures afterwards, posing, <laughs> blah blah blah. But yeah. obviously, in that situation, I think if any of us was in that situation, unless your name is Anthony Smith, I think we would have all just done the same thing. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Anthony Smith. I think it was the right thing to do. Jones, but I think uh, Sterling, yeah, Sterling definitely made the right call. Um, but I definitely don't see him being champion uh, as of next year. But I do think my choices are very split and very difficult to decide who I think is going to be. It's between two people, but mm -hmm. I'll let you say who you think is going to be champion before I name my two. Interesting. Okay. Um, I have a feeling the people I'm going to say might be who you're thinking of. But because okay. I'm split as well, I think it's either going to be Jan yeah. or Jose Aldo. Oh, wow. Okay, no, with total opposites. Really? Yeah. Do, really? You, do you want to hear looks, who... Aldo looks solid, man. I think he looked amazing in his last fight. Um, shit. TJ as well. I forgot about TJ and Corey. Is this the they're, they're the two. They're, stout, the two. They're, the, they're the two. Uh, TJ Dillashaw or Corey Sanderhagen. I, that fight that they had the other week. Yeah, I th the fight that, that, that they had the other week was... Like you couldn't you couldn't separate them. Mm. I think the decision could have gone either way. They both did good things in the fight. Mm. And I think both of them beat everyone that's in front of them. I think they both beat everyone that's behind them. I think so. I think I think TJ can beat everyone that's in front of him and behind him. And I think Corey could do the same. I think mm. Corey could beat TJ. Like because how close that fight was the other week. Like he showed that he belongs at the top. I know Aljo beat uh Corey and he made it look easy. Mm -hmm. But I think if that fight happens again, I don't think that happens. Mm. So I, I do think you know what I completely forgot about TJ. <laughs> I completely forgot about him and Corey, man. And then he just because the his... most recent fight I've seen is Jose Aldo. Yeah. Yeah, the recent the most recent Bantamweight fight. Um yeah, I think I think I agree. I think either TJ <sighs> it could be Jan. Jan's good as well. See, I think I'll take out Aldo, one. and I think it's either gonna be between TJ. And Jan. I think TJ TJ performed so well because really that was his first fight back. And he went head to head with Corey, who by the way, I thought yeah. was gonna win that fight. I thought Corey was gonna KO him. Yeah. Um, but TJ looks good. He's got a solid chin on him. He still looked great. His movement was great. It was. For his first fight fight back, that was pretty good, man. I'll give him an A plus for that. I think it will definitely be interesting to see which person out of our two will be champion as of next year. It'll be interesting to see if we're completely wrong. And it is still Aljo. Imagine if Aljo goes in there, does beat Peter, yeah, oh, and then he beats someone else and beats them. Then they'll put both of us in our goes place. On like there. an 11 fight win streak. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest of all time contender. <laughs> Um, oh and it was starting with taking the news. Yeah. <laughs> Do you imagine <laughs> what a story that would make, eh? That would that would be a great story. Oh, right. Man. Moving on. Featherweight. Featherweight. Who we got? There's, well, only, there's champ. only one answer for me. There's only one answer for me. You I know think we agree on this one. one. I think we'll agree. Go on, you first. Max Holloway. Absolutely. It I has to be in the best shape of his life, man. He looks his last fight was, was incredible. unbelievable. Incredible. He looks like 
against Calvin when he was dodging all them punches and said, I'm the best boxer in the UFC. Da, 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 da. But, and he's not even looking at the punches and he's dodging them. He's, he was just he entered the matrix. You know he's what just, it reminded me of, that performance? What? You know, have you seen Dragon Ball Z? No. Oh, Aston. Oh, my God. <laughs> so there's this move that Goku does. Listen, all these, yeah. all you DBZ fans, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> there's this move that Goku does where he, like, teleports behind people. He, like, shifts. Okay. It's like, in, it's like instant transmission. DBZ fans will know what I'm talking about. But it's the one where you, like, flash behind him. That's what I felt like Max was doing. He was just, like, uh, just yeah, teleporting yeah, yeah, yeah. and just, like, just playing just with this guy. Way. Nuts. I, I do think uh, Volkanovski is definitely underrated and underappreciated because the fact that he's beat Max Holloway twice and we're still like, no, like, the, that's not the case. Like, because they were so close. Like, I, I feel like, I know we're both Max Holloway fans and I think maybe because of that, we're a bit more like, you know, Max, Max should be yeah. really <laughs> Max, <going> on. Oh, <laughs> Max. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like that's, like that's what's going on. But yeah. I do think if they are to fight again, I do think Max should have another fight before he fights um, mm-hmm. uh, Volkanovski. I think Volkanovski and Ortega is going to be an interesting fight for different reasons. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I think that's a very different fight to what uh, Holloway versus Volkanovski is. Mm-hmm. So I think that will be a great fight seeing Ortega, Volkanovski, because it's a different look for Volkanovski to see. It's a different puzzle to solve. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure how that fight will end. I do see Volkanovski winning that fight, but how he wins is a different is a different story. But mm-hmm. I do think Holloway will be the champion by the end of next year. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. No dispute on that one. <clears throat> Okay, what's next? Uh, uh, lightweight. Oh, wait. Lightweight. Whoa. Whoa, yo, 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 yo. Uh, seeing as you well, went from the last one, I'll, I'll, I'll start this one off. All right. It, it's so tough to say because there's so many contenders in that top five. 100%. With my, I think depending on how Makashev performs in his next fight, because you know what's going to happen. If he beats RDA, they're going to send him straight up the top. He's going to be fighting either Gaethje or Chan. I think yeah. that's going to happen. He'll completely <clears throat> rock uh, Dariush, and he'll be straight in there. And then yeah. if he wins that fight, then he's a contender. He's a number one contender. Yeah. He's yeah. literally a couple fights away from being a number one contender, I think. Yeah. Um, so I think it depends on how that goes as to whether he'll be a contender. But if it's not Markashev, I think it will still be Dubronx. Interesting. The reign of Dubronx is here. He's going to be what? Anderson Silva. As, as much as I think, obviously, he's going to be... I think that he will beat Poirier. Mm-hmm. But I think if he beats Poirier... And Gaethje beats Chandler. I think Gaethje beats Oliveira, and I only think that purely because of the way that Gaethje goes into a fight. If he lands those four leg kicks in that first round, you're stuck. I think he was so close to doing it against Habib. So close. He hurt. He that, that last them. takedown that Habib got to finish the fight, he was hurt. That's why he shot yeah. that takedown. Yeah, and he was letting off them leg kicks, and I think he was maybe. A couple away from stopping that whole game. Like, it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I feel like that's what will happen if Oliveira and Gaethje fight, and that's why I think Gaethje will be the champion by the end of next year. Hmm. Hmm. Gaethje, that's an interesting one. See, I don't think Gaethje beats Chana. Really? I think Gaethje's too easily hit. And I think if he gets cracked by Chandler, I don't think he has the chin. I think really, would, yeah. Did he's, taken, like a... he's taken a lot of damage, man. If you remember in the Tony Ferguson fight, there was that uppercut that Tony dropped him with. Yeah, yeah. And it was at the end of the round. If there was yeah. another like fifteen like seconds, yeah. Tony could have won that fight. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. He could have won that fight. Um, do, you, do you know yeah. what it is? I think, I think if you think the perspective that I'm going with is 
they both have the power to knock each other out. Chandler has the power to knock out Gaethje. Gaethje has the power to knock out Chandler. Mm. I think it's a question of who hits who first. Yeah. And with that question, I think Gaethje is going to hit Chandler first, harder. And I think, I think whether it comes from him hitting him with a couple of leg kicks and then boom, or whether he goes straight in and just cracks him, mm. I think he's going to be the one to do the, more, the most damage quicker out of the two of them. And that's why I think Gaethje will win that fight. Interesting. All right, we'll do. We'll have to do a review. We'll do a full review and breakdown leading up to the fight. Yeah, um, it's going to be interesting for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, which division is next? I think it's well away. We're on well away now, aren't we? Oh, I, th- I think I think that's a no-brainer again. You think it's Kamaru, don't you? Yeah. You think it's Covington, don't you? He's so tough. He's <laughs> so tough. Those two are like. For me, what I saw from Covington in his last fight against Woodley, he looked leaps and bounds better than he was before. His striking looked so much more polished because he's changed camps. He's at, um, is he at AKA now? I don't know where he is, but yeah, I know he left American top team. I don't know where he is, but he's he's doing, he's training some heavy kickboxing shit and he looked good against Tyron. He looked very good. His striking looked good. He definitely looked good. He definitely looked good. The, the interesting thing is, I, know, I think Usman's got better. Do you know what I mean? Like Drew, it's one of them. It's it's so neck and neck. I and think it. if you put them both like on a pedestal, so both here, they're mm. they're clearly both the top two in that division. Mm. And I think if you had them this level when they first fought, they were both fairly evenly matched because it was two two going into the last round. I think if Covington has gone up this level, mm. I think Usman has gone up this level. Because when you look at his striking now, how he's putting together his shots, mm-hmm. I think he's much more likely to knock out Covington now and completely shut off the lights mm. than to have to weather the storm and land a couple of shots and keep weathering the storm. I think he now has that power to be able to go, okay, if you want to strike or if you want to wrestle, you're going to pick which way this fight is going to go. Because mm. he's Usman is probably thinking, I'm a better wrestler even though they're evenly matched as wrestlers, but he's definitely a better striker. And I think if they are going to go toe-to-toe in the striking realm, I think Usman wins with ease. With ease, you know. If, it, if it's oh, down to the striking, I think with ease. Ay, ay, ay. You could be right. You could be right. I can't doubt Usman, man. He's, he's so good. He's very good. I think in terms of champion next year, at the end of next year, I do think it would still be Usman. And if not, I'm interested to see how like how Hamza Shamaya does when he comes back. Because he's he's definitely, I think he's got the potential to he's an unknown, isn't he? He's an unknown entity. You haven't seen much of him, but what I've seen of him in his training, like the people he trains with, like he trains with Gus and stuff, man. He's actually yeah. a big dude. Like, yeah. he, he's a big welterweight, it comes up. Um, because he fights the middleweight as well, he yeah. Go, go between the two, yeah, yeah. His striking as well is very good. I think he's the better striker than Usman. I, he potentially is the better wrestler. He's longer, he's bigger. I don't know, it's going to be interesting, but I don't sure. want to say, I don't want to say, oh, it's going to be comes out because it's so early. Yeah. We don't know, yeah, yeah. Not even, yeah. We haven't, not we haven't seen him fight someone top, top level, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um. Another dark horse is Leon. I think yeah, people sleep on Leon because of what happened man. with Nate. I think he lost yeah. a lot of stock in that fight, man, which is yeah. a bit I strange, mean, but... it's, it's one of them tough ones. I feel like if you put him against Masvidal, he has a chance. I think if you put him against Covington and Usman, I don't think he has a chance. I think Covington... Mm, I don't know. I'm, I'm maybe being biased because I, I like Leon, but uh, I don't know. I think it will be Usman. Realistically, I think it'll be Usman or Covington. One of those two. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, middleweight, uh, middleweight Israel Adesanya Ooh. is uh, next. Uh, I don't I think, think he's losing. He's not losing, is he? I think it's a clear uh, unanimous decision uh, with the middleweight rankings. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he's still going to be champion. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he he will he will lap the middleweights and have to move up. He'll be forced to move up because he'll have so. no, no more challenges. I think maybe if... Uh, I don't think 
Hamza will come up to middleweight. I know he was fighting at two weight classes, but I think his weight class will stick at welterweight. Uh, I think if he comes up to middleweight, it will be interesting to watch him. I'm not saying he's going to be champion. It will be interesting to watch him. I like his fighting style. Like I prefer... I prefer his fighting style to Habib's fighting style, so I yeah. find it more enjoyable to watch him. I think like, he's I respect, better striker than Habib. Yeah, like I respect Habib and everything he did, like in terms of his wrestling and how dominant he was and mm. X Y Z. But I didn't really like watching his style because obviously you knew what was going to happen, and mm. like it was a bit boring. Like, but not to the extent of like I don't appreciate what he could do. It's it's a bit like Floyd Mayweather. I, I'm watching Floyd Mayweather. I find boring, but I respect what he's done stuff yeah. like that and I respect how he is as a fighter mm -hmm. but whereas uh, Hamza is a bit more dynamic with what he brings to the table so I enjoy to watch him a bit more so mm -hmm. I do think he could pose some challenges no matter what weight class he's in mm -hmm. but I don't see anyone beating Israel mm -hmm. I agree I don't see anyone beating him either I think he's too he's just he's just too good you can't get him down I thought the best chance of someone getting him down was Vittori now it could be Brunson, but put, here's how I see it. I thought Vittori stood the best chance of, of taking him down and beating him up. No yeah. one's beating him in the stand-up. Yeah. Sure. If they are, maybe it's Whitaker, but even still, I don't think it, I don't think Whitaker beats him. Mm -hmm. um, Vittori got battered. You saw how that one went. Yeah. I don't think Brunson can get him down, even no. though he is a better wrestler, I think, than Vittori. Um, who else is there? There's no one, is there? Not there's, really. There's no one left. Not really. I think, I think just... Izzy will be the king of middleweight, as you say, and and he'll be forced to move up. Move up. Ah, there is one forgotten man. Okay, Luke Rockhold. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> no, not not Luke Rockhold. Sean Strickland. I think he looks oh, very yeah. impressive. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I really like how he looks. And I think him against Adesanya would be a great fight. I think it would be a great fight. Obviously, mm. he's still got a fair way to go. I think he's ranked number eight, I think, from what I just saw. Mm. But I think he would be a great uh, matchup uh, for Israel. I think it would, stylistically, a man that's like, not afraid to get hit is a dangerous man. Mm. Or he could be a stupid man. So mm -hmm. I think it would be a, a great fight to watch that fight. Again, I still think Adesanya wins, but I think that's probably the most challenging fight for Adesanya, other than Whitaker. Interesting, interesting. I think it's early days for Sean, but he's got a lot of potential. He's got a lot of fights he, under his last fight. Well. He looked wicked. He looked really good. I Uriah thought, Hall. To be honest, I thought um, Uriah Hall was going to win that. So did I. But then I seen. I think that was the first time I seen Sean fight, and I was like. This kid can fucking fight. Like yeah. his jab is like a piston. Yeah. <laughs> like he's got a solid jab. Um yeah. I, I think Izzy Izzy reigns and we're with the potential of, of Sean giving him a challenge. Yeah. Light I heavyweight. Think, Woo! Yeah, this is where it gets interesting. My favorite division. For me, I, I think there's only one person. Uh, that will mm. be champion by the end of next year. Uh, I think it will be the jury guy, uh, the guy yeah, with the funny, yeah, the funny fucking yeah, thing. The yeah, the samurai. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think uh, he will be yeah. the champion. I think he's probably the most complete at the moment. Like Yan is a great fighter and he's very well rounded, mm -hmm. but I think he's beatable. Like normally when you look at a champion, you think, wow, like. Well, like who's gonna beat him? Mm -hmm. I look at Yan and I think you are beatable. Like you mm -hmm. have losses on your record and a fair amount of losses, so you can be beat. Mm -hmm. And I think he will get beat, but whether he gets beat and then someone else beats the champion and then someone else beats the champion, whether it's gonna be like a pick and like a merry-go-round of just mm -hmm. swapping champion after champion, mm -hmm. or whether he will keep the belt until they come face to face mm -hmm. and then he loses. Um, that's that's my thoughts, but what about you? Interesting. Um, I think I agree. I think Jiri has the potential to be a champion. Do you know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of you know in those games where you get like that berserker mode where you just like you could just keep going forward. Yeah. And you yeah. just, he's like a juggernaut. That's what he reminds yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. 
However, he can be hit. I've seen against Reyes. Reyes was cracking him, even though he wasn't, you know, going down. Yeah, Reyes was hitting him with some good shots, yeah. and he felt them. I think yeah. if he goes up against someone with the power of Yarn, or someone who's who's a, a veteran of the game, yeah. even a Glover, I think a Glover could take him down and do some work. I think it's early days for Jiri, but he does look very, very good um, offensively. I think even Rakic, um, I think his name's Rakic. Uh, I think he he looks quite good as well mm. um, at, at light heavyweight. But whether he has the potential to be champion is another question. I think I think him versus Jiri would be a good fight if that hasn't already happened. I'm not sure if that's happened before because yeah. I think they are they're only one rank in a part. I think. Yeah, they are. Yeah, it's five yeah. and f- wait. Two and three. Yeah. Two and three. I think it's, uh, to be honest, I think it's going to be a pick em, as you say. I don't see anyone reigning dominant in that division until potentially John Jones comes back, which would be interesting because there's a whole new pool of contenders now. Yeah. You've yeah. got, you got Jiri, you've got Rakic, who he's never fought. He's never fought Jan. Um, yeah. be interesting to see him fight Glover again. If Glover wins yeah. the belt, could you imagine? Jones comes back to fight Glover again. That would be insane. That would be cool. And that would be a good retirement fight for uh, Dick Shara. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you're saying Jones would retire him? <laughs> <laughs> nah, because I, I, I think if uh, Glover wins the belt, I think he retires regardless. I think if he loses the belt, I think he retires yeah. as well. Like, in terms of, I think no matter what happens in this fight against Jan, I think that's his last fight. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I think, I think so. He's, he's, what, like 44 now or something like that? Yeah, he's he's up there in age, he for is. sure. He is. Interesting. Um. I'll I'll go for a pick and I'll say I'll say Jan Jan's still champ uh-huh. in the next year. Now we've got the finale, the the mystery, oh. the mystery of uh, John Jones or no John Jones. This is an interesting one, isn't it? Because you've got the enigma, which is John Jones. We have no idea how he looks at heavyweight. Like he could yeah. come into heavyweight and be like the most dominant he's ever been. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like imagine yeah. he just came in and KO'd Stipe. <laughs> It's true. Yeah, it's KO true. Ganu. And then you're like, whoa, whoa what's going on here? Like, <laughs> like what, what you <laughs> <again>? yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, uh, I don't know. I think if I had to put money on it, I'd say Surreal Gan is gonna be champ at the end of next year. He's he's by far, I think, the most decorated heavyweight. He can do it all. Um yeah. he really impressed me against Derek, uh, against Derek Lewis. Because we all know how da- like how dangerous Derek Lewis is, and yeah. I don't think I've ever seen Derek Lewis that shut down. Yeah, uh, did Derek land a punch? Was it one punch? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was basically. It was. I guess it was McGregor versus Mayweather in terms of hit and not get hit. You've got someone who hits like a train, mm. or like at least for that weight class in that sense. Mm-hmm. And I think he just knew how to evade everything that Lewis had to offer and just kind of made it easy. He's sick. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be Surreal Garn, man. I think it's going to be Surreal Garn. It depends. It depends if Jones comes back and fights for the title immediately and who Jones fights. Because I think if Jones... Oh, it's tough to say. I, I really, We don't know how Jones is going to be a heavyweight. It's so tough to say because I want to say that he can beat Surreal Garn because when it comes to like the chess match and the, like Jones is the best at that stuff. Yeah, he's, he's done so that times. Yeah, yeah. But I think the power that Surreal Garn possesses is his leg kicks are brutal. You see what he did to Derek Lewis. Yeah, I think he can. You know, Jones has got skinny legs, man. And I don't know. I th- if I put my money on it, I'm going to say Surreal Garn is champ at the end of next year. I think my pick would have to be Francis. I think Nganu maintains okay. the belt. I think whether he rematches Stipe, he wins. I think if he fights Garn, he wins. I think if he fights Jones, he wins. Mm-hmm. I think no matter who he fights, he wins. I think he's got to this level now. I think I think his first run where he was on that tear, knocking everyone out first round to fight Stipe, he wasn't ready. He was or it, maybe it wasn't that he wasn't ready, but he was too much of, he believed his own hype. He, he thought 
I am this man who can KO anyone if I touch them with my hands. I can't be stopped. Like, mm-hmm. I felt like he probably had that energy because of how everyone was building him. I think this time he's ready. Like, I know he's obviously got the belt now, but I think he's ready to take on any challenger. And I think he will beat any challenger for the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't say I disagree with you. I can't. I agree. I think Ngannou is the best he's looked. Yeah. I do personally think Garn will beat him. But if he doesn't, then I don't see anyone else beating him. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's the end of that list. And the end of the podcast, I'd say. I think we've been... I think it's a good way to end it. Yeah, it's been an exciting first episode. Finally, sure. got it done. It's been yeah, months it's in the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been months in the making and, and we're finally here and we're going to have loads of content for you guys. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll be doing fight reviews, fight breakdowns, yeah. predictions. Um, it's early days, do you know what I mean? It's our first yeah. sort of episode, our yeah. first time doing this. Um, and a lot honest, we, just, we just want, I think I speak for the both of us when I say we just love MMA and we just want yeah. to talk and, and share our, our views and just sort of build our own community where everyone can sort of talk and, and discuss. Yeah thoughts with each other and just have fun this channel is going to be all about fun and all things mma um other things as well i'll be getting special guests on the podcast um we'll be doing all kinds of talks there'll be different um there'll be i I don't know whether to make a sub channel or not yeah i think i'll keep it all under one channel so this channel Um, will have like sort of variety um and other things as well Um, yeah we'll be bringing you guys a ton of content So if you did enjoy this podcast and this video, please do like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Peace.